Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Arbitration and Mediation Chamber of the Center of Industries and the Federation of Industries of Sao Paulo, it is my great honor to address this distinguished audience at the beginning of the 2023 Senior Symposium on Maritime Silk Road International Economic and Trade Arbitration. I'm deeply grateful to the organizers for this invitation. This year's symposium is focused upon the development of the BRICS countries and on talking about the block of countries that composes the BRICS, we have to adopt a posture of self-restraint so as not to let ourselves be betrayed by self-congratulatory sentiments. But yet, the numbers that represent the scale and the strength of the group of countries are overwhelming. In 2021, four out of 10 people living in the planet were native of one of our countries, making the BRICS the largest consumer market in the world. We may add that this is basically a very young population with 22% with less than 14 years of age. We all know that the combined GDP of the bloc had a staggering growth over the last 20 years while the world as a whole grew at a 70% rate during these two decades, the GDP of the BRICS experienced a growth of 240%, thanks in great measure to the exceptional performance of the Chinese economy. In 2022, the BRICS recorded a flow of 9.2 trillion of US dollars in trade, or 18% of the global trade. China alone accounted for 12% of the total. The BRICS account nowadays for a quarter of the world economy, while the average income of its populations has also improved substantially, something that must be the final objective of a people-based economic planning. All these numbers reflect in a strong flow of investment. 500 billion US dollars in foreign investment, or one fifth of the total amount of capital directed to production, were destined to the BRICS groups in 2021. The enhancement of the characteristics of the group that unites quite different but complementary nations, all of them committed to the creation of a healthier world order and a true equilibrium in trade of goods and services enables us to predict a great future for the BRICS. The adoption of interchangeable currencies among the countries of the bloc is a crucial step in this direction. We may only wish for peace and stability to be a catalyst of the virtues that are intrinsic of each of our countries and populations peace and stability will allow us to reap the fruits of a bountiful harvest. The participants of this symposium may be reassured that in what concerns the dispute resolution system, the BRICS have in place extraordinarily strong institutions that are able to handle complex cases derived from the accrued trade. Some of the most recognized arbitration centers are situated in countries of the BRICS. To mention but a few, China International and Trade Commission and the Hong Kong International Arbitration Center are among the five preferred institutions by international clients. Also outstanding are the Indian Council of Arbitration and the Arbitration Chamber CSP FIESP of Sao Paulo. All members of the BRICS are signatories to the New York Convention, which ensures the prompt enforcement of arbitral awards. It must be said that still many cases are not directed to our excellent infrastructure of arbitration chambers. My own country, Brazil, is the second most frequent client of the CCI in Paris or in what regards maritime arbitrations in London. As a final message, I would like to leave to the consideration of our audience the importance of choosing seat of arbitration 
and arbitral institutions native from the members of the bloc, not only because these are trustworthy institutions that offer excellent service, but also because they allow for significant advantages as regards to costs of litigation. Ladies and gentlemen, from sunny Brazil, I extend to you my sincere wishes for a highly successful exchange of ideas and experiences along the symposium. Thank you very much for your attention.